Okay, so we want to look at this question of when a limit fails to exist. When does a limit not exist, right? So we looked at a few examples where we were able to find limiting values for functions, right? In cases where the function was not actually defined at the point we were interested in, but nonetheless, uh, for x values that were near that point, we were able to work out y values, and we were able to find that as we got closer and closer to that point, our y values were all moving in towards some common value, um, which we called the limit, right? Um, so when, when is this impossible? When is it not possible to find this number L, right, this y value, so that the value of f of x will be close to L whenever x is close to a? Uh, when can we not find it? Well, there are, there are a number of things that can go wrong. Uh, but there are sort of three common uh, scenarios. Okay, the first one is that f of x approaches different values. on either side of this number A, okay, this A here, okay? So that's sort of like the, we, we just saw an example of a piecewise defined function where whether we looked on the left of zero or the right of zero, we did find that the y values were coming together, the same y values. But if we had changed the definition for either of the two parts for that function, right, if we had shifted one side up or down, uh, but then we would be seeing different y values on either side. That's one scenario where you don't get a limit. Okay. Another one is that your function essentially has a vertical asymptote. It grows without bound. Okay. Now, uh, that this second scenario is one where we can certainly say that the limit fails to exist, but uh, at least there is no number, right? There's no numerical value for a limit. Nonetheless, we will see that we can use language in this situation here. We can talk about limits being infinite. So we'll be able to talk about a function having an infinite limit at a point um, later on in this chapter, okay? Um, the last one is that our function sort of, well, let's say, oscillates. And we'll look at an example where we try to make it clear what we mean by when we say that the function oscillates, why there is no limiting value in this case. Uh, so we'll, um, we'll look at these scenarios each in turn. We'll look at some examples to sort of explain what's going on and, and why we can't possibly have a limit in any of these situations.